Shalom, my Hebrew nation. This is Officer Ibar, and this evening's lesson is called With All Thy Getting, Get Understanding. And my reader this evening is Brother Kayel. He'll be reading for me this evening. All right. So we're going to go, what I'm going to cover this evening, I'm going to cover three points of the lesson. The first point is lack of understanding. The second point, applying understanding. The third, understanding in the last days. So those are the points that I'm going to be covering this evening. And this is a lesson that I did last year. So I added, did a a modification on it and critiqued it and added some some, um, more word into it and more clarity. So I look forward this evening to, for a good delivery. Let me give all praise and glory and honor to Ahaya Bahashem Yeshaya Wawawa, which is greet to greet my brothers and sisters in the name of our Father Ahaya, the Son, the Savior, Yeshaya, and the Holy Spirit. Wawawa. All right, so let's get into our lesson this evening. Our first reference we're going into is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Once again, my brothers and sisters, um, we're going into Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Get a pen and, um, and some paper to write these scriptures down. It would be uh, very helpful. All right. That's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. The book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Get wisdom, and with all thine getting, get understanding. All right. So we see this evening's lesson is with all thy getting, get understanding. So I'm laying the foundation. So the scripture says wisdom is the principal thing. So therefore, get wisdom. Now, with all thy getting, get understanding. So this evening we're going to cover wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We're going to break that down this evening so we can have a, a, some clarity on those um, definitions of each word. So we're going to, now we're going to go into Ecclesiastes. That's in the Apocrypha. And that's either Sirach or Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 15. So this, is, this verse right here is going to give us an insight what we're going into this evening. We're laying the foundation of understanding. All right, so that's Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 15. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law, or of the Lord, love, and the way of good works are from him. All right, so we see wisdom knowledge, and understanding of the law. So we're going to cover those three attributes, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law, okay? What law is it, what law is it referred to? The most highest law, because it says, or of the Lord, or of the most high, or higher, all right? So then you have love, and the way of good works are from him, all right? So I'm going to break down the definition of knowledge so we can have clarity of what knowledge is when it comes to seeking the law, all right? So the definition that I have, this is in the Webster. I'm going to break it down to English. If you have time, brothers and sisters, you can look it up and you'll concord it and get the, the Hebrew breakdown of it. I'm just going to break it down with clarity where we can understand it in English, all right? So knowledge, all that has been perceived or grasped by the mind, learning, enlightenment, Information, skills acquired are gathered by a person through experience or education. All right, so my brothers and sisters, now we, we have the definition of knowledge. So it's about re- receiving the law, okay? Once you learn of the law, you receive it. That's knowledge. You obtain that, okay? Now, we're going to go into wisdom. We're going to get the breakdown the definition of wisdom, the quality of being wise, 
power of judging rightly and following the soundest course of action based on knowledge, experience, understanding, and good judgment. So this is wisdom now, all right? So wisdom is the, the you look at the soundest course of action, all right? So you now you understand the difference from wisdom and knowledge, okay? Knowledge is you obtaining. Now that knowledge that you receive once you obtain it, now you're going to use wisdom, which is the sounding course of action based on the knowledge that you received. So now we understand what wisdom is. Now we're going to go on to understanding. Understanding to imply clear perception of the meaning of something, but more precisely stresses the full awareness or knowledge arrived at. All right? So now we see what understanding is. It's the full awareness of your knowledge and your wisdom and you begin to see everything from the beginning and the end. So that's understanding. That's why the scripture says, with all thy getting, get understanding. That's the full awareness. All right? So that's what we're going into. Now, these three attributes where, where we break down the, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the law. All right? So we must understand that. While we're getting this knowledge of the law, we are to apply wisdom to the law. Then once we apply that wisdom to the law, we must have understanding of the law of the Most High, our higher. All right? So I just want to lay this foundation, and now we're going to go into the lesson. All right? I'm going to, lay, I'm going to, um, we're going to go over some precepts. That's where we're going to go right into Isaiah, chapter 28. We're going to cover verse 9 to 10. And my brothers and sisters, have your pen and write down these, these chapters and verses. This is going to help you. Because in these last days, us Hebrews, the Bible, we need understanding. As the scripture says, we need understanding our people. Because we have to teach, this, teach the most high highest law and statutes and commandments to the nations. And we must have that knowledge, that wisdom, and that understanding of the law, as the scripture says. All right, once again, we're going into the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Amen. So we see, verse 9, whom shall he teach knowledge? So who shall the Most High teach his laws to? So we can have that understanding, so we can get that word and preach to the, to the nations. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And that's what we covered. All right? Now the scripture goes on to talk about, okay, I understand you're coming into the truth. Good. Now, we must get weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. We, we must get off the milk and get onto the meat. All right? That's what the scripture is talking about. You must get to the meat now. All right? Now, like I said, we're coming into the truth. Learn all you can. Get, write these scriptures down as, as the most I provide teachers to bring you the word. Write these verses and chapters down. Step up to the plate. Okay? Like we always say, we need 100 percenters. All right? Because with these hundred percenters, they're going to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the law of the Most High. You must be a hundred percenter to, to receive this, all right? And this is it's going to help you. All right, so now, look, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept. Now, this is also, as I, I'm going to be bringing out um, prophecies, okay, uh, according to the last days. So I'm going to have precepts to back that up. All right. So now we're going to go into the book of Psalms, uh, 119, verse 104. All right, my brothers and sisters, I'm laying some more precepts of wisdom and um, understanding. So that's the book of Psalms, 119, verse 104. 
Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Verse 2. That's the way this life. So, I, so you see, through thy precepts, okay, I get understanding. All right, so we understand what precepts, that's the most high's word. It's like verse, the, the chapters, the verses, they're going to line up on one accord on each scripture that we go into. That's where the precept is. All right, it gives you more understanding that here a little, there a little. So what you get from one chapter and verse, You'll get, you'll get another revelation, but it, they're all going to fall on one chord. So that's what the scripture, that's what the Most High desires for us to follow, okay? Through his precepts, we get understanding. All right, my brother, brothers and sisters? So now we're going to go into the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. We're going to get some more understanding on the importance of wisdom and understanding. All right? So that's Proverbs chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Verse 3. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. 4. To give subtlety to the simple, simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Five, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Verse six, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse seven, the fear of the Most High Ahia is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So we're going to go to verse 4, to give stability to the simple, to the young men, knowledge and discretion. So we, now we understand what knowledge is, and our young people, we need discretion, all right? We need discretion in these days, in these times, in these end times. We need discretion, okay? Verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding so attain unto wise counsel. So the scriptures let you know that a wise man is going to read. He's going to study the law, statute, and the commandments. All right? This is a wise man. All right? Now, not only that, he's going to surround himself with wise counsel. He's going to have an elder around him. He's going to have his deacons around him. He's going to surround himself with counsel, godly counsel, as the scripture says. So that's a wise man of understanding. All right? Now we're going to go on down to verse 7. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we know the first step to the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Most High. Not the fear when you tremble in your boots, but that fear of reverence, that fear of, hey, the Most High can destroy the soul and the body and cast into the lake of fire. So that fear of knowing, hey, I must reverence the Most High. I must be about my Father's business. All right? So I pray my brothers and sisters is getting understanding, wisdom this evening. So we're going to move on to, we're going to stay in the book of Proverbs. We're going into chapter 9. We're going to cover verses 10 and 11. That's the book of, we're staying in Proverbs. We're going into chapter 9, verses 10 through 11. The book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Amen. So, man, it's, it's the Most High's word, is, is, he, his word speaks for himself. It speaks for itself. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge is holy, is understanding of the holy. So like, of the holy is understanding. All right? So verse 11 talks about, for by me the day shall be multiplied. So if you're, having, if you're applying the wisdom and the understanding of his word, 
your life will be expanded. As far as it, the scripture says, for by me the days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. All right, that's when you're applying his word in your life, and you're getting an understanding. You're getting the wisdom. Amen. All right, now we're moving on. We're staying in Proverbs. We're going into chapter 16, verse 22. All right, my brothers and sisters, and, 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 and another thing, those who are just coming into the truth, I recommend that you read the book of Proverbs. Read the whole book. Read a chapter a night. Because, I mean, it, breaks, it gives you clarity and understanding of his word. Okay, it gives you wisdom and understanding. All right? So I recommend those who are coming into the truth to read the book of Proverbs. All right? So we're standing in Proverbs. We're going into chapter 16, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 22. Understanding is the wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. Amen. So we understand it is a wellspring of life. So you know that. Why? Because as we read in Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 13, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge is of the law, or of, the, of the most high. So now we understand why it says in, in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 22, understanding is a wellspring of life. Because that, that understanding gives you that full awareness of his laws, of the Most High's laws. Okay? All right. Uh, a few more chapters in Proverbs. Actually, one more chapter. So we go into chapter 24 of Proverbs, verse 3. That's Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. Amen. So through wisdom and house is built. All right? Now, the understanding, it is established. Okay, what is established? That it's built, and now it's established for the what? For love, for teaching the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. When you raise your family, all right? You are to teach your, your seed, the law, statute, and the commandments of the Most High. The high. All right? So now we're, gonna, we're going into the book of Psalms, um, chapter 111, verse 10. And that's Psalms 111, verse 10. Psalms 10. Book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Amen. So I want to lay these precepts. I want to lay these foundations of understanding. All right, so we can have an understanding of this evening's lesson. Because this evening's lesson is titled, With All Thy Getting, Get Understanding. So now we're going to go into our first point, and that's lack of understanding. So I'm going to break out some, some chapters and verses where it shows a lack of understanding. All right? So in these chapters, you're going to see where they was lacking of understanding. So we're going into the book, Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verses 12 through 19. And I'm going to bring out the lack of understanding of Lucifer or Satan, all right, uh, the devil, okay, where he has lack of understanding, period, all right? Even though he, you could, as we read through the description of um, Satan, we're going to see that with all of this, with all the, the knowledge and the, the, um, the fact that he was walking with God up in heaven throughout um, the heavens, he lacked understanding, all right? So I'm going to bring that out in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 19. So we're going into Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 19. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 12. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Thou hast been in the Eden of Garden of Ahia. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper the sapphire, the emerald, 
and the carbuncle and gold, the worksmanship of thy taverns and of the, thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So, so we see here how Satan was created, our Lucifer, which is now Satan. So we see that he was perfect. And we're going we're gonna to read through that in verse 15. But the most I created Lucifer perfect. Even though he had all these attributes, all these gifts, he, he lacked understanding, as we're going we're gonna, to um, find out as we go through, throughout the verses. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of Ahiah. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 15, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Verse 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of Ahiah, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17, so like the right there. So we see in verse uh, 15, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity. Okay, sin, sin was, sin started in Satan. Okay, what is sin? The transgression of the law. All right. So iniquity was found in thee. All right. So he wanted to, he wanted to be a higher. As we read this, you're gonna, he's gonna, he wanted to be God. Okay. And iniquity was found in him, okay? And as we read on, he, you're going to, um, Satan, he got one-third of the angels, and those angels trying to overthrow heaven. Now, that's a lack of understanding. How are you going to uh, overthrow the Most High and Higher? All right? He knows he created you, so how are you going to destroy? He knows he's omnipotent, all-knowing. He's sovereignty. He knows all. All things. All right? So that's a lack of understanding. So go ahead, Aqua, 17. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Verse 19. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Amen. So we see what happens to Lucifer, or Satan, or the devil. Okay, or uh, Beelzebub, which is Lord, which is translated Lords of the Fly. So we see the lack of understanding on the part of Satan. Despite despite all his gifts, how how beautiful Satan Satan was, you know, or you know, still is, you know, because he's deception, you know. But he uses um, his beauty, his um, angel of, of light, you know, to deceive us. So we must be aware of um, Satan's trips, and now we see what what lack of understanding is. So we're still going to um, recover. We're going into the Book of Revelations, chapter twelve, verses seven through. So like I mean, verses seven through twelve, and we're going to go through that, and that's Revelations, chapter twelve, verses. 7 through 12. The book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, 
now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, accuser Salakia, of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Amen. So we see what happened when Satan got kicked out of heaven. He came to earth. All right, so we see that in, in the verses. All right, so we see where the lack of understanding is. So I'm bringing all these out so you can see the the footage, okay, so you can see the precepts lining up with each other on what took place. All right, so you see, you can see for yourself where the lack of understanding. All right, so now we're going into Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. And we're going to bring out some more chapters of lack of understanding. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Go ahead and get eight. Ah, get eight. Is eight on there? Eight's not on there. Ah. All right. So we see with verse 7, and when, and when the thousand years are expired, so Satan was bound for a thousand years. So now he's loosed and he goes out. And there's this lack of understanding. He still tries to deceive the nations, thinking he's going to still overthrow Ohio. So this is where your lack of understanding comes in. I don't care how you look at it, it's a lack of understanding. Because if you know Ohio's word, you cannot surprise Ohio. You cannot overthrow Ohio. All right? So here are scriptures where you see where a lack of understanding. All right? So now we're going into... My second point, which is applying understanding. So we're going to cover that, and we're going into Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. And we're going to get on scriptures on where we apply understanding, all right? So that's in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes and the 66 books, and that's chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. Verse 2. For the Most High Ahia hath given the father honor over the children and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Verse 3. All right. Shall I like the act right there? All right. You, you in Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3, verse 1, in the 66 books? Con act. All right. So um, verse one, verse one to every where it says to everything there is a season. Um, yes, I see that right here. Right. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen. So we see to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So now we 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 have understanding that everything that takes place in our life is is for a season and is for a reason. Because it says, and, to, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So this is where you apply understanding. Because now you know in your life you're going to have trials and tribulations, but you know it's for a season, all right? And you know that if it's happening in your life, it's because it's a time to every purpose under the heaven. So this is where the applied understanding comes in, all right, brothers and sisters. So now we're going to go into James, the book of James, chapter 1. Verses 2 through 8. I pray my brothers and sisters are writing these um, chapters and verses down for edification. And that's the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. James, chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, but let patience have her perfect way, 
that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Ahia, that give it to all men liberally, and abrade it not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Most High Ahia. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. So we see in verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So this is where you apply understanding in your life. All right? And then we go down to... Verse 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, all right? So when you come to the Most High, you must come to him in faith, and you do not waver or doubt. When you ask to receive, come in faith. Then we look at, it says, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed, all right? And then we look at verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, all right? So we know not to be double-minded, all right? We know because that brings unstableness, okay? That brings doubt. So when you come to the Most High, you must come to him in faith, all right? So all these verses are applying understanding, all right? Now we're going to go into 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. All right, so now we're getting to understand it. And this season's le- lesson is, with all thy getting, get understanding. All right, my brothers and sisters. So once again, we're in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery tri- trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Verse 13, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Amen. So these, you see, beloved, think it not strange. So when you're going through a trial, it says, Beloved, think it not strange. The fire of the trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So now when you apply and understand it, you know, hey, the scripture talks about a trial that I'm going to go through in life. So now you have the understanding of why you're going through something. First 13 says rejoice. And as much as you are partakers of Christ, sufferings. So you know what Christ went through, you're going to go through. But you rejoice because now you have understanding of why you're going through your storm. Because it goes on, it says in verse 13, when his glory shall be revealed. He may be glad also with exceeding joy. So now we, under, now we understand what we apply and understand it in life. These are the, the verses to look at when you're going through something. You go to this because now you have understanding of why you're going through your storms in life or your trials. All right, my brothers and sisters. Now we're going to go into the book of Psalms. We're still getting understanding on how, how to apply understanding in our lives. I'm not going to bring up these verses. So you can apply yourselves and have understanding. And that's the book of Psalms, chapter 37 we're going into. We're going to cover verses 1 through 5. When you get time, my brothers and sisters, you can read Psalms 37 on your own. I'm not going to go through it all. I'm going to um, pick some verses out, but it's a beautiful um, chapter. Psalms 37, very inspiring, very encouraging. Um, this is actually one of my uh, my favorite um, chapters, Psalm 37, and um, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it, it allows me to be at peace and calm. When I'm going through my storm, that's the first thing I go to is Psalm 37. It puts everything into perspective. It gives me that wisdom, that knowledge of this word, that understanding, and that wisdom of this word. It's beautiful. We're going to cover uh, um, some verses in it. Um, that's Psalm 37. We're going to cover verses 1 through 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 1. Spread not thyself because of evildoers, 
neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. So, so we see, fret not, so like, fret not thyself. Don't worry about the evildoers. Neither be thy envious. Don't worry about the fact that they're, you see them um, supposedly prospering with, the, with their wicked devices. You know, you see them with their BMWs or they, they bezels. The scripture says, be not envious against the workers of iniquity. So if they're not keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments, and receiving your child, hey, they're the workers of iniquity. Don't be envious against them. Don't be jealous of them. All right, we're going to cover what's going to happen to these workers of iniquity. All right, go with verse 2. I... Verse 2, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Amen. So we see that cut down like the, like the grass. So I don't know, have you ever seen the grass cut down and the wind blows it away? That's what's going to happen to the wicked the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withered at the green herb. So that's what's going to happen to the workers of iniquity. Don't be envious of them. Just pray for them and teach them the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. All right? Go ahead with verse 3. Verse 3, trust in the Most High and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4, Delight thyself in the Most High Ahia, and he shall give thee the, the desires of thine heart. Verse 5, commit thy ways unto the Most High. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. So we see, this is beautiful. Verse 3, trust in the Most High, and do good. Trust in him and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So he's going to take care of us, my brothers and sisters. I'm a testimony of that. You keep the law, statutes, and the commandments, he's going to take care of you. You're going to be fed. He's going to open up doors that no man can open, only him, only the most high or higher. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the most high. Delight thyself. What's that mean? Delight. Put your whole heart, that 100 percent You delight yourself in, in the most high. You give your all to him. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So whatever you desire, and it lines up with the Most High's will, he's going to bless you with that. So if it's according to his will, he will give you the desires of thine heart. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Most High. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I've seen that, that happen in my life. He brings it to pass, my brothers and sisters. You delight yourself in him, he's going to bring your desires to pass. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So a, for example, my desire and his in my heart was to preach his word to his people, to feed his people. He's bringing that to pass. He has blessed him with a platform, his people, to feed his people with his word. That's the desires of my heart. So my brothers and sisters, this word comes to pass. This word comes to life. All right? Amen. So now we're staying in Psalms 37. We're going to skip down to verse 18. Like my brothers and sisters, like I, said, I mentioned earlier, you can read Psalms 37 on your own. We're just going to skip to verse. We're going to cover verses 18 and 19. And that's verses 18 and 19. Verse 18. The Most High knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall, be, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Amen. All right, go ahead and skip to verse 23 through 25. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High, and he delighteth in his ways. Verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Most High upholdeth him with his hand. Verse 25. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. Verse 25. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. So we see right here, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High, and he delighted in his way. So we see there's no accident when we come into the truth, and the Most High higher. 
Your footsteps are ordered, as the scripture says. A righteous man's footsteps are ordered. All right? So we see the steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High. So wherever you tread upon, wherever you go in life, once you came into the truth, it's not no coincidence. It's not no accident. So when you run into that lost soul or that, that person that needs to hear the word, it's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. That was ordained for you to minister to that soul. That's what the scripture is talking about. We don't just pop up out of nowhere just to be happy. No, our steps are ordered. All right? In verse um, 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. So the scripture is letting you know you're going you're gonna to go through some things in life. Okay? You're going to deal with your flesh. All right? Now, though you come short, okay, and sometimes we yield to the flesh, the scripture goes on and says, though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So he's going to make a way of escape for us. He's going to hold us. Okay? He's not going to utterly cast us down like he's going to do the wicked. Okay? He's going to cast the wicked down because they don't trust in him. They sin willfully. They do it on purpose to break the law, the sin. That's the transgression of the law. They do that willfully. All right? We don't, we don't practice sin. So when you yield to flesh and you get weak, okay, the Most High is let, 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 letting us know to repent, get back in, in his word, and strengthen yourself, okay? Move on. So then we look at 25. I have been young and now I am old. So this is David speaking. He says, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The Most High is going to take care of us. We're, 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 not, we're not like the other nations. We're not going to be out there begging for bread. The Most High will take care of us. All right? That's his word. He gave us his word. Verse 25. I, I, for example, this is a testimony. I wasn't working for, for three years. The Most High still provided, put food on my table, a roof over my head. All right? Scripture says, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. This is scripture. This word. This is his word. This is the most high's word. All right, all right we're going to go ahead and skip down to verse 30 and 31 we're going to cover. Verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Verse 31. The law of the most high is in his heart. None of his steps shall fly. Oh, man. All right. Let's go ahead and go down to 34 through 37. Verse 34. Wait on the Most High and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Verse 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Verse 36. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Oh, Amen. So this is this is beautiful. This is his word is beautiful. All right. So we see verses thirty four through thirty five, through thirty six and thirty seven. When you trust in the Most High, He's going to bring everything to pass. Even though you see the evil with with money, with cars, all these material things in life, don't worry about that. Scripture says, "Here, you trust in Him. You put your trust in Him." Okay, verse 34, wait on the Most High and keep his ways, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. So we're going to see the wicked be cut off. And I've seen that now. Those who my enemies came against me, those who hated on me, the Most High moved them out of my life and took care of them. And here I am, blessed, prosperous, healthy, peace, joy. I mean, he's going to take care of us. We must trust, trust in him, as the scripture says. Now, these, this is what I covered. This is the point two of applying understanding. All right, my brothers and sisters, we're going into my third point, which is understanding and the last days. All right, my brothers and sisters. So we're going to cover this. We're going into an apocrypha, second Ezra. Chapter 15, and what we're going to cover is 
understand you in the last days, and I'm going to break out some precepts that you can write down for Second Ezra chapter 15. We're going to I have precepts for those that we're going to go into, and you can write this down now, and that's Isaiah chapter 11. And Isaiah chapter 13, and that's Isaiah 46, and Isaiah 47. So these are the precepts to Second Ezra, chapter 15, chapter 16, that I'm going to cover, and also Revelation 20 and Revelation 18. I mean, Shalaki on 20. I mean, Revelation 18. So these are the precepts. Those are Isaiah 11. Isaiah 13, Isaiah 46, and Isaiah 47. So this will give you the understanding what I'm about to bring forth at the second answer, chapter 15. So we're going into the Apocrypha, that's chapter 15. We're going to cover um, verse 1. Go ahead. Out. That's the second answer, chapter 15, verse 1. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Most High. Verse 2. Right. So, like, uh, so we see in verse 1, speak. Behold, the, the Most High speaking to Ezra, to speak to his people. All right. And so what you're going to see in, in chapter 15 that we're going to go through in Babylon. All right. And these are the... the um, the first thing we're going to go through, you're going to see that this is America, that this is the future of America, all right? Go ahead. I skip down to verse 4. Read verse 4 through verse 11. Verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, behold, say the most high, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Verse 6. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Verse 7, Therefore said the Most High. Verse 8, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly ex exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continuously. Verse 9, And therefore, saith the Most High, I will surely avenge them, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Verse 10, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Verse 11, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues, as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Amen. So we see in verse 10 that, it's, as you can see, it's talking about America, Babylon. It's not going to say America. That's why I gave you those precepts so you can look them up. All right, so you can see precepts line upon line, here a little, there a little. All right, so this is where you're going to get to understand it when you look up these precepts that it's talking about Babylon. So you see in verses 10 and 11, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Verse 11, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So you can see it's not talking about Egypt because it says as before. All right, that's past tense. And will destroy all the land thereof. All right. Now, the precept for that is in Isaiah chapter 13, and you're going to read verses 19 and 20. But read all the 13, but you can read 19 and 20. Actually, let's go there. Let's go there uh, there right now. Right. Go to um, Isaiah chapter 13, verses 19 and 20. We're going to we're going to get some understanding this evening. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, 
shall be as when Ahiah overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 20, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. So we see Babylon is, the ancient Babylon is still there in Iran. So we, we, we must have understanding of that already, all right? So it's not, it's not talking about Babylon over there in, in Iran. That's ancient Babylon. It's still there. It's still habited. People still live there. There's still animals there, all right? According to verse, uh, verse um, 20, it shall never be inhabited, all right? Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, all right? So we understand that these are the precepts that will bring us to understand is speaking of the daughter of Babylon, which is America, all right? And, the, and the, to back that up also in Revelation 18, all right, my brothers and sisters. So now let's go ahead and go back to Second Baruch. I mean, so like, I'm second answer. We're still in 15, and we're going to go to, we're going to skip down to verse 14. Go ahead up, verse 15 of um, chapter 15 in Second Ezra. Verse 14. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verses 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. All right. Verse 15. Go ahead and skip. So I could go ahead and skip to 17. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Okay, skip to um, 19 to 22. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Verse 20, behold, saith the highest, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Banias, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Verse 21, like as they do yet this day upon my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Say, thus saith the Lord, Ahia. Go ahead with 22. 22, my right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. All right, go down to verse 24. Skip to 24. Verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, said the Most High Ahia. All right. Oh, man. So we see what's happening. This is understanding in the last days. So I'm bringing forth these future prophecies so we can have understanding in the last days, my brothers and sisters. All right, this is what's going to happen to the daughter of Babylon, which is America. But not only America, I'm going to cover it in, in Ezra, Second Ezra chapter 16, it's going to speak of Asia as well, which is China. The most I'm going to deal with China. I'm going to bring those precepts. I already gave you those precepts for that as well. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and skip to, go down to verse 43 to 50. My brothers and sisters, when you get time, you can read all of chapter 15 and Second Ezra, but I'm just going to, pull a, a certain um, verses out, and then you can read the rest on your own. So that's, we're going to cover verses 43 to 50. 50, Yach? Yeah, start from 43. Verse 43, we're going to read to um, verse 50. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verses 43. And they shall go steadfastly into Babylon and make her afraid. Verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out unto Upon her, they sh- then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that are about her shall bewail her. Verse 45, and they that remain upon her shall do service up unto her that have put her in fear. Verse 46, and thou, Asia, that art, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person. Verse 47, Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please the glory of thy lovers, which have also 
always to lock your desire to commit whoredom with thee. Verse 48. Thou hast followed her that slakiak. Verse 48. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore saith Ahiah. Verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee, windowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. Verse 50. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower. The heat shall arise that is set over thee. Amen. Skip, skip to 53. 53. If thou hadst not always slain my chosen, exalting the stroke of thine hand, and saying over their dead, when thou was drunken. All right. So, so like you right there. So we see. And in chapter 15, the, the, the understanding in the last day, this is all going to take place in America, my brothers and sisters. This is what's going to happen. All right? This is scripture. That's why we must have understanding. All right? And this evening I have a few more, some, some more precepts and feature about future prophecy. You're going to see the signs. Because I know brothers and sisters are always asking, what are the signs of the last days? Okay? I'm giving you, I'm presenting that to you now. All right, so here, these are the signs. Pay attention to what's going to happen, what you're seeing. All right, these are prophecy. These are precepts, all right, of future prophecy. All right, so let's go ahead and go to chapter 16. I'm just going to read a few on your time. You can read in the Apocrypha, chapter 16 of Second Ezra. So you can read that on your own. I'm just going to read a, a few verses out, out of it. Go ahead, I'll read verses 1 through 11. Second, right. Ezra, second Ezra chapter 16, verses 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Verse 2. Gird up thyself, yourselves with cloth and sacks of hair. Be well your children and be sorry, for the destruction is at hand. Verse 3. A sword is sent upon you. And who may turn it back? Verse 4, a fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Verse 5, plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? Verse 6, may any man drive away any hungry lion in the wood? Or may anyone quench the fire of stu in stubble when it had begun to burn? Verse 7, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer? Verse 8. The mighty, Ahiah, sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Verse 9, a fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? Verse 10, he shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? Verse 11, the most high shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder? At his presence. All right, like right there. That's good. Right? So we see we're talking about verse one. Woe to Babylon, come by the Americas and Asia. All right. So those precepts that I gave you earlier in Isaiah chapter eleven, Isaiah chapter thirteen, Isaiah chapter forty six, and Isaiah forty seven are the precepts for Second Ezra chapter fifteen sixteen. All right, my brothers and sisters. So you can see he's speaking of. America, the daughter of Babylon. All right, my brothers and sisters. So we, we see it says, gird up yourself with cloth and sack. All right, because it says, be well, your children, and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. All right? Then you look at verse 3, a sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? Verse 4, for fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? All right? So we see... Ahijah, all the sin that America did, has done, and still is doing, the slavery, captivity for us Israelites, the wickedness, the murders, the lynchings, um, the eugenic programs, the, um, the Stevie institution, all these things that America has done to the, I'm going to break it up in Revelation 18, how it, the Most High said, you have killed my, my prophets, and, and the saints, 
All right, and you speak in um, Revelation 18. So the daughter of Babylon, the Most High, is going to revenge us, okay, of what the daughter of Babylon has done to us, his people, his chosen people. All right, so my brothers and sisters, when you get time, read chapter 16. I just want to break a few um, verses out, out of that, and we're going to go to another precept, and we're going back into the 66 books. We're going into Zechariah chapter 2, verse 1 through 8, and this is, this is what this is giving us the instructions to leave Babylon, all right, to leave the daughter of Babylon, all right, and we're going into the wilderness, and we're going to see that in Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1. I lifted up mine hand, eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Verse 2. Then said I, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. Verse 3. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. Verse 4. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Verse 5. For I, said the Most High, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Most High, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith the Most High. Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. Verse 8. For thus saith the Most High, a high of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Amen. So we see a verse. Now, my brother says this is a, a precept because I'm going into the second book after, after this. I mean, after Revelation 18. But you're going to see that this is the wilderness that we're going to go into both. Um, the daughter of Babylon is destroyed. The Most High is going to take us out of Babylon before it's destroyed. We're going to be in the wilderness. And this is the, the uh, precepts to that, so you can have understanding. It says in verse 2, And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. This is the wilderness. Verse 3, and behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. Verse 4, and said unto him, run, and speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. So it's talking about the wilderness we're going to be in. The most high is going to have us in the wilderness, and it goes on and says, for the multitude of men, which is us, and cattle. So the most high is going to provide cattle with us. He's going to provide food with us when we're in the wilderness. Therein, verse five. For I say, the Most High will be unto her a wall of fire round about. So when we're in the wilderness, He's going to protect us with fire around. Instead of walls, it's going to be fire to shield us from Satan and his 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 gloom, his, his um those who are working with Satan, because the other nations are going to be trying to fight us. But the Most High is going to have fire around us to protect us in the wilderness, and will be the glory in the midst of her. So that's us in the wilderness. And it goes on in verse 6. He's given us instructions to flee the daughter of Babylon, which is the land of the north, in verse 6. That ho-ho, that's at last, at last, come forth and flee from the land of the north, says the Most High. All right, so that's the Most High giving us instructions Giving us one because the daughter of Babylon, which is the land of the Lord, he's going to destroy. And I'm going to cover that in Revelation 18. So I pray, my brothers and sisters, you're getting this understanding. And my third point is understanding in the last days. All right. So let's go ahead into Revelation. We're going into the book of Revelation, chapter 18. Brothers and sisters, you get time. You can read. Chapter 18 on your own. I'm just going to pull a few verses out so you can get some understanding. That's Revelation 18 
and we're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to read to verse 5. Revelations chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Verse 5, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High Ahia hath remembered her iniquities. Amen. Stop right there. So we see, as I, you just, we just read it in Zechariah. Flee the land of the Lord. Why? You look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Who is the Most High speaking to my people? He's speaking to Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are his chosen people. So he's speaking to us. He's saying, Come out of the daughter of Babylon, because she will be destroyed. It says, Come out of her, my people, that ye may not be partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. America's going to be nuked. America's going to be destroyed with nuclear missiles. Okay? And that's according to Isaiah 11, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 46, and Isaiah 47. So we see, my brothers and sisters, this is understanding in the last days that we, we must have. All right? Go ahead, Ox, skip down to verse 8. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord Ahia who judges her. Amen. So we see right here, America's going to be destroyed in one hour. Guess who's going to nuke her? Iran. And that's the means. Once you read Isaiah chapter 11 and Isaiah 13, is going to talk about the means. If you, you do your research, the means is the, your modern-day Iran, all right? So that's what's going to nuke America, all right, in one hour. That's why, you see, they're not messing with Iran. Don't you think that, that, that would have been the first place America went into? But they know. They know prophecy. They're going to go around here. They're going to deal with the um, Afghanistan, Kuwait. They're going to mess with those, those. But at the last, they're going to mess with Iran the last, because they know that she, she has nukes. That's why they're not messing with That's why, that's why they're not invading Iran. They know prophecy. They understand the Most High's word. Okay, uh, go ahead. Go, go down to verse 17, verse 17 through 20 of Revelation 18. Verse 17, For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sellers and as many as trade by sea stood off afar off. Verse 18, And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Verse 19, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her coastlines. For in one hour is she made desolate, Verse 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Ahia hath avenged you on her. Amen. So we see, verse, verse 17, it's going to, the daughter of Babylon, America, she will be destroyed. These are all, when you, my brothers and sisters, as you read verses 1 through 23, you're going to see the attributes. It has all the characteristics of America. And then uh, the precepts that I gave you all lines up the Revelation 18. This is speaking of America. 
All right, my brothers and sisters, in one hour she's going to be destroyed for the wickedness she did to us. All right, the the way she the way she has misled the other nations into fornication and to drunkenness, as the scripture says. All right, she's a daughter of harlots. All right, America is wicked, according to the scriptures. Now we look at verse twenty. It says, "Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles." And prophets, for a higher hath avenged you on her. So the slavery that she took us through, all the lynchings that she that America has done to our people, the prison population, the wrongful prison sentences, all this, the drugs in our communities, the abortions that um, America has done to our people, Israel, the Most High is going to avenge us. So, amen. We're going to go ahead and go to Second Baruch. That's a, it's an apocrypha, but not the, the authorized King James Version. We're going into Second Baruch. And we're going to cover the coming judgment. So, not only, this is speaking once the daughter of Babylon is destroyed, and we're in our wilderness, this is what we're going to go into right now. So my brothers and sisters, you can put it up on the internet if you don't have it. That second book, and it's called the Comment of Judgment. We're going into, and we're going to start from twenty-four one, and we're going to read to verses one through four. So that's second book, twenty-four one to four, verses one through four. Second Baruch, verse 1. For behold, the days come, and the books shall be opened in which are written the sins of all those who have sinned, and again also the treasuries in which the righteousness of all those who have been righteous in creation is gathered. Verse 2. For it shall come to pass at that time when you shall see, and the many that are with you, the long suffering of the Most High, which have been throughout all generations, who has been long-suffering toward all who are born, those who sin and are righteous. Verse 3, And I answered and said, Behold, O Most High Ahia, no one knoweth the number of those things which have passed, nor yet of those things which are to come. Verse 4, For I know indeed which has befallen us, but what will happen to our enemies? I know not. And when you will visit your your works. Amen. So we see this is Baruch speaking to the Most High, asking what's going to happen to our enemies. All right, this is Baruch asking what's going to happen with the good, with the evil, and with the good. And the High is going to answer him. He answered him. And we're going to look at, we're going down to 25, 25, 1. We're going to cover the sign. It says sign of the coming judgment. So that we're going to cover 25-1 to 20. Go ahead. 25 and 1. And he answered and said unto me, You too shall be preserved until that time, till that sign which the Most High will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end of days. Verse 2. This therefore shall be the sign. Verse 3. When the stupors shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations, and again, when they shall fall into great torments, and it will come to pass when they say in their thoughts by reason of much tribulation, the mighty one doth no longer remember the earth. Yes, it will come to pass when they abandon hope, and the time will then awake. All right, so we see that I is answering Baruch. He's letting them know what's going to be held before in the last days. So these are the signs that we are to, to look out for, to pay attention to, and to study his word. Okay? Remember, brother and sister, the, the name of this title is with all thy getting, get understanding. So this is my third point, understanding in the last days. All right? Go ahead, Aqua, uh, 26. 
to Yeah, go ahead. And I answered and said, Will the tribulation which is which to be continue a long time and will that necessity embrace many years? Oh man, how so like it so so like it, so now we're going into twenty six to thirty and this is Baruch it's called the twelve woes that are to come upon the earth. These are the signs. After the um, daughter of Babylon is destroyed, and we're going into the wilderness, this is what's going to happen. While we're in the wilderness, but the nations are going to experience the 12 woes, the Messiah and the temporary Masonic. So go ahead and start with uh, 27, 1. 27, And he answered and said unto me, Into 12 parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. Verse 2. In the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions, verse 3. And in the second part, there shall be slayings of the great ones, verse 4. And in the third part, the fall of many by death, verse 5. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword, verse 6. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain, verse 7. And in the sixth part, earthquakes and terrors. Verse 8, wantings. Verse 9, and in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of Shittim. Verse 10, and in the ninth part, the fall of fire. Verse 11, and in the tenth part, rapine and much oppression. Verse 12, and in the eleventh part, wickedness and unchastity. Verse 13, and in the twelfth part, confusion with the mingling together of all those things afar said. So, 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 like it. so we see the twelve woes that are going to take place upon the earth in the last days. My brother, this, is, this is understanding. All right. So to go ahead with uh, 14, uh, go ahead on verse 14. 14, for these things, for Salakia, so like verse 14, for these parts of that time are reserved and shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. 15. For some shall leave out some of their own and receive in its stead from others, and some complete their own and that of others, so that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that is, the consumption of the times. Confirmation of the times. Lock you. So we see what's going to be us in the last days while we're in the wilderness. So now we're going to go down to uh, 28 1. Go ahead, I'll read that to 31. 28 1. Nevertheless, whoever understands shall then be wise. Verse 2. For the measure and reckoning of, time, of that time are two parts a week and seven weeks. 3. And I answered and said, It is good for a man to come and behold. But it is better that he should not come lest he fall. Oh, I can write that. Hold on. So we see Baruch is like, for the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts a week of seven weeks. Verse 3, and Baruch is asking, he says to Ahia, he says, it is good for man to come and behold, but it is better that he should not come lest he fall. So it's going to be so much evil, so much wickedness, so much death. Even Baruch is like, man, a man that's being born, he's even coming to this world in this time, in the last days. So that's how horrifying it's going to be, my brothers and sisters. And that, and that's, man. All right, go ahead. I'll... Verse 4, but I will say this also. 5, will he who is incorruptible despise those things which are corruptible, and whatsoever whatever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible, so that he might look only to those things which are not corruptible? Six. But if, O oh Lord, those things shall assuredly come to pass which you have foretold to me, so do you show this also unto me, if indeed I have found grace in your sight. Verse 7. It is in one place or in one of the parts of the earth that these that those things are come to pass, or will the whole earth experience them? 
Oh, man. So we, we see Baruch is asking, is this going to be in one part? He's asking the high, is it going to be in one part or is it going to be all over the world? All right. And the high is going to give me a response. Go ahead with 29. Why not? 29. And he answered and said unto me, whatever will then befall will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will experience them. Verse 2. For at that time, I will protect only those who are found in those self same days in this land. All right, so like you right there, all right there. Right. So we see in verse 2, all right here is telling Baruch, for at that time, I will protect only those who are found in those same same days in this land. So it's talking about when we're in the wilderness, that's the Israel. When we're in the wilderness, we're going to be protected from all that once we get into the wilderness because there's going to be death, um, cannibalism, all that going around us, but we're going to have that wall of fire around us in the wilderness. We're going to have his holy angels protecting us while we're in the wilderness, and all this is going to be happening. All right? Go ahead, Doc. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts that the Messiah shall then begin to be revealed. Verse 4. All right. Go ahead. And behemoth shall be revealed from his place, and Leviathan shall ascend from the sea. Those two great monsters which I created on the fifth day of creation, and shall have kept until that time. And then they shall be for food for all that are left. So we see right here that, so, like, so we see right here where the the Belimith and the Leviathan, those are the, the, the two most creatures that was created on the fifth day. The Leviathan um, under, under the, in the sea, and he's going to come out in the last days. And the Belimith is on the earth somewhere on the land. So these are the, the um, from the sea, Shalaki. So these two creatures are from the sea, and they was created on the fifth day. So these are like, like you, you see your Asian um, movies with Godzilla. Those are not too far set. Those are not too far off. They read our records. This is in our records, what I'm reading right now, Second Baruch. This is Hebrew records. So they know about the Leviathan, the Belimians. They know about these two creatures. They're coming out in the last days. Go ahead, I. Verse 5, the earth also shall yield its fruit ten thousand fold and on each vine there shall be a thousand branches and each branch shall produce a thousand clusters and each cluster produce a thousand grapes and each grape produce a core of wine. Verse 6, and those who have hungered shall rejoice. Moreover, also, they shall behold marvels every day. Verse 7. For wind shall go forth before me to bring every morning and fragrance of aromatic fruits. And at the close of the time that the treasury of manna shall again descend from on high, and they will eat of it in those years, because these are they who have come to the consummation of time. Amen. So we see what's going to be for us while we're going into the wilderness, what's going to happen, my brothers and sisters. So you see, just like our ancestors, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, Moses took the children of Israel through the wilderness, we're going back into the wilderness. Just what they experienced, we're going to experience again ourselves. This generation, or the next generation, Israel in the last days, this is what we're going to experience. Just like our forefathers went through the 40 years, it should have been 11 days, but because of um, disobedience and unbelief, it lasted 40 years. So the, um, our, our forefathers was purged through the wilderness. Now, we, we're going to get purged while we're going into the wilderness so we can go into heaven, but we're going to be purged before we get into the city, my brothers and sisters. So these are the, the understanding. These are the, the scriptures that we must study so we can have understanding in the last days. Go ahead to Aqua 31. 31. So we are saying, shall- so like a, Hold on, so like, so we in Second Book still. We're going into um, chapter thirty, verse one. Second Book thirty, verse one, and it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of the Messiah is fulfilled, 
and he shall return in glory. So I, Shalaki right there. So we see verse 30. I mean, Shalaki, chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass after these things. So all these things have to take place. Why? When the time of the advent of the Messiah is fulfilled, that he shall return in glory. So all that you hear about Christianity, about the rapture, they're going to be raptured out, they don't go through nothing, that's a lie from the pit of hell, my brothers and sisters, because I'm reading to you his word right here. It says, all this that has to take place, what I just read before verse, I mean, so like in verse 30, chapter 30, verse 1, and it shall come to pass after these things. So all these things must be fulfilled while we're in the wilderness. All right, the death, the plagues, the cannibalism, the lukes going off, everybody being destroyed, the Leviathan coming up, so it could be for food because the earth is going to be contaminated. It's going to be nuked. So we, we're not going to have these food to eat. So that's going to be the last food is the Leviathan. All right? So then the Messiah shall come. Now we're going, we're going into chapter 30, verses 2 through 5, and this is the resurrection. I don't know what Christianity is talking about, about the rapture and all this and all the false doctrines the, that have truths that they're um, teaching the masses is a lie. All right? I'm bringing the truth to you from his word. Go ahead, Aqua, um, chapter 30, second Baruch, chapter 30, verses 2 through 5. Verse 2. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again, and it shall come to pass. At that time, that the, that the treasures will be opened, in which is preserved the number of the souls of the righteous, and shall come forth, and a multitude of souls shall be seen together in one assemblage of one thought, and the first shall rejoice, and the last shall not be grieved. Verse 3, for they know that the time has come of which it is said, that it is the consummation of the times. Verse 4. But the souls of the wicked, when they behold all these things, shall then waste away the more. Verse 5. For they shall know that the torment has come and the perdition has arrived. Amen. So we see what's going to befold us in the last days. All that we must go through, what I just, just covered with you, then Yeshua will come get us. While we're in the wilderness, he's going to deliver us and bring us into the new Jerusalem. And verse 2 says, then all who have fallen asleep. So that's, the, that's our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those who kept the law, statutes, and the commandments of Rashid Rashid. Those are going to rise before us. I mean, while we're in um, the wilderness, the dead shall rise that are in Christ. And, and we're going to all go and meet Christ, and we're going into the new Jerusalem on earth. And it shall come to pass at that time that the treasures will be opened in which is preserved the number of the souls of the righteous. And they shall come forth, and a multitude of souls shall be seen together in one assembly of one thought. And the first shall be joyous, and the last shall not be grieved. So we see my brothers and sisters, this is the end of us. This is what we are to befold and come into. So I'm excited. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you receive understanding in the last days. I pray that this lesson this evening was edifying to the body. And with all that I get and get understanding, my brothers and sisters, this is what it's all about. Because we are the chosen people of the Most High, Ahia. We are to teach His laws statutes and commandments with understanding, with wisdom, and with knowledge. We are to teach the law. According to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verse 15, like verse 15, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the most high. And love and the way of good works are from him. So I want to give all praise and glory and honor to the most high the higher for his word given to me to give to his people. And I want to thank my readers this evening, Brother Kyle. Thank you, Brother Tawala, Tawala Brother, and I yield.